So a couple of quick announcements that I made also on Friday. We've got our seventh homework. It's due on Wednesday. Um, I think you guys know the drill on that by now. Uh, we've also got another quiz um, this Thursday in discussion. So um, those are all the announcements. Um, the, the quiz will cover basically um, some combination of everything that we've covered. Obviously, on a short quiz, we can't put every topic in, but it won't cover anything that was on the second exam, but it, it could cover stuff from chapters three, chapters four, or chapters five. Um, so um, you just kind of have to be up on all of that stuff, basically. Um, okay. So let's start with, um, we're, we're gonna talk some about Euler paths and Euler circuits. Um, you might remember this Bridges of Konigsberg problem. We're building up towards solving this problem basically. So the problem was we had this diagram and there were all these bridges in a town and these islands. And we were asking ourselves, could we take each of the bridges in turn without repeating any of them and without say swimming across the river. And it seems like a few of you were able to do six of the seven, but no one was able to do seven of the seven. And I said, I claimed that that was not because you were lacking in creativity, but because it couldn't be done. So we're going to get there today. Okay, so you might remember that on a graph, a path is basically a route of distinct edges that take us from one vertex to a different vertex, okay? And if a path starts and ends with the same vertex, it's called a circuit. We're gonna talk about particular types of paths and circuits called Euler paths and Euler circuits. So an Euler path is basically the question that we asked ourselves with that Bridges of Konigsberg problem. It's a path that uses all of the edges of a graph. And an Euler circuit is defined similarly. It's a circuit that again uses all edges of a graph. So we can ask ourselves for different graphs. Does this graph has, have an Euler path? Does this graph have an Euler circuit? And so that's what we're going to go through today. Let's do a quick example. This is example 5.10. We're going to draw a few graphs that are small enough that we can eyeball it. In a bit, we're going to talk about something that will tell us exactly when something has an Euler path or an Euler circuit. But for now, we're just going to draw some small graphs. And I'm just going to tell you whether they have an Euler path or an Euler circuit. OK, I forgot to label the vertices. So this is A, B, C, D, and E. OK, so let's. Let's start, say, at C. OK, let's go from C to A. OK, maybe I'll, um, I'll do it like, what's a good way to do this, actually? OK, so we're going to start at C, go to A. Whoop. We'll go to A, then A to B, B to E. E back to A, A goes to D, and then to B, and then we only have two edges left. We go to C, and we go to D. And you can see we just covered every single um, edge of the graph. So we went from A, C to A to B to E, to A to D to B to C, and then back to D. And this is an Euler path. Because again, we didn't lift our pen, or at least we didn't have to. And we went from 
Um, we went along all of the edges with no repeats. Okay, it's an ordered path as opposed to an ordered circuit because it starts at D, or it starts at C and ends at D, and those are different vertices. Okay, let's do a similar example. It's almost the exact same graph. Here we have A, B, C, D, E, and now our, our last vertex that we just added, we're gonna call F. And let me try to take nearly the same root because it's nearly the same graph. We just have this one extra vertex. Okay, so let's try this. Um, so we go from C Okay, C to A to B to E to A to D to B to C to D and this was our original Euler path and now we have two edges left and luckily we can just take them F and then C. So what was it? C, A, B, E, A, B, C, D, D, F, C is an Euler circuit. One interesting thing about Euler circuits that doesn't work with Euler paths is you can permute them cyclically, meaning you can start from any of these vertices. Like say I started with B, I could go from B to E to A to D to B to C to D to F to C. And then because C is on both the end and the beginning, I could then go to A and then to B. Essentially I'm doing a big loop. So it's like, say you go for a walk in the morning and you pick up your friend about partway through the walk and you walk around this loop and, and your friend drops you back at your apartment and then you go and then your friend goes and back to their apartment. You're both essentially doing the same loop, but it's slightly different because you have different start points and end points in the loop. So when you have an Euler circuit, you can do these things. And the last piece of the example is again a similar graph. It's really challenging my artistic skills here, you guys. Okay, so we have A, B, C, D. And while this may look similar, I'm just going to assert for now that this has no Euler path or circuit. And you, it's probably small enough that you could try it, right? Like let's start at A, we go to B, maybe we go to C, we go to D, we go back to A, but then we have to go, we have these two edges left. And maybe if we go to A, to B, to D, to A, to C, and then we have these two left. So you're always gonna just not be able to quite get there. Okay, so any questions about this long example? Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and copy this diagram that I think some of you had a better drawing of it, but this is my impressionistic version of, of Konigsberg. So if you remember this, so here we're, we're on, this is example 5.12. Konigsberg. Okay, and if you remember from last time, we have an island here that's green. We have sort of a land mass here that's green. We have this, the North Shore and the South Shore that are also green. We have this blue water that we can't get across. 
unless we take these bridges that are in red. So we have seven bridges and we asked ourselves, can we walk around all of these bridges? And what I wanna do, because we haven't been studying um, paths or circuits on pictures, we've been studying them on graphs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this into a graph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat each landmass as a vertex and each bridge as an edge because the bridges take you from landmass to landmass. And so that's just how the edges take you from vertex to vertex. So it'll look a lot different because we're taking this whole island and compressing it to one vertex. And even more significantly, we're taking this whole North shore and, and compressing it as well. But it makes sense to do this because say that you take this bridge up here, then maybe you walk along here and take this bridge down, but there's no worry that you're not gonna be able to do this because you're on land and you're able to navigate through. So we can just say that once you exit this bridge, you're essentially at the entrance of this bridge. Alternatively, what you could do is you could extend these bridges and connect them all or something, and then it would really look like a vertex. So I'm gonna have the upper land mass here. I forget why the book called them this actually, but we're gonna call this one R. We're gonna call the island A. This is L. I think L R is for right and L is for left. And we're gonna call this piece over here D. And remember, we often call our vertices A, B, C, D, E, but we don't need to. So here it's R, A, L, and D. And there are two bridges going from R up here to A, the island. So let's draw them. One bridge, two bridge. Two bridges from A down to L. Then there's one bridge from A over to D. And there's also a bridge from R to D and from L to D. So we get this graph. Okay, so this is our new Konigsberg graph. Um, and our question, question was, does this graph, I was nice, I said we can do either an Eulerian an Euler um, path or an Euler circuit. So now we've simplified the problem to looking at this particular graph. Are there any questions about how I turned this diagram into a graph like this? It's sort of you see it or you don't. So if you don't see it, let me know and we can discuss it more. Can you explain it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Yeah, so um, essentially this thing here, how, do, how are we doing this? So let's, what colors aren't we using here? Pink, I guess. So this whole land mass up here, we count as R. This land, this island we count as A this down here we count as L, and this here we count as D. So what we can say is let's treat each of these land masses just as a vertex. So we have four vertices, R, A, L, and D. And we ask ourselves, can I get directly from say R to L? If I if there's a bridge from R to L, I'll draw that um, I'll draw that um, edge. And there's not. See R is here, L is here. There's no bridges between them. But there are bridges from R to A. There are two of them. And so I just draw here. And then there are two bridges from A to L. So I just draw here. There's a bridge from A to D. We draw that as an edge. There's an edge from R to D. And there's an edge from L to D because there's a bridge here. 
another way to look at this, another way to look at this, let's copy all of this. Okay, so I'm gonna go bit by bit and do this stuff. So this, we want to be huge. I don't know if this is the right size. I'm gonna go and I'm going to connect all of these bridges. And at this connection point, let's call this R. So let's say there's kind of a hub here where all of these things connect. Does this make sense? And then let's do the same for A. We can connect all of these. And we can connect this here. And then at D, let's connect all of these bridges and then connect all the bridges at L. Okay, and so why am I connecting these bridges? I'm connecting them because if I, if I get off a bridge, I can easily walk to the next one. So we're only really worried about the bridges. As long as we stay on the same island, we're kind of in the same place. So now what I'm going to do here, I'm going to kind of put these in in black. So this is these are all the places, all of the different locations. So this right here is R, this right here is A, this right here is L, this right here is D. And then finally, now I don't care about the actual topography, so I'm just going to erase everything. And so now I think we can see a little better. We have R, we have A, we have L, and we have D. And you can see that R connects to D. R connects to A twice, D connects to A, A connects to L twice, and D connects to L. Okay, how's this? Did, did this help? Is there more that's a sticking point here? I know it can be really tough to see the, the correspondence. So we can go over it again if we want. Okay, are we being quiet because we get it so we don't have questions or are we being quiet because we didn't get it so much that we don't even know how to ask? For me, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do off, but like when you kind of redrew it from like connecting all the bridges, it made it make a lot more sense to me. Oh, good, okay, good, good. Gabby, did you have something as well? No, I'm all good. Okay. Okay. Okay, well, I can certainly if, if anyone is feeling lost on this, it's, it's not surprising and we'll and we'll go over it um, like later or in office hours or something. But uh, for now, I guess let's move on. So now that we have this graph, remember, our goal is to see does this have an Euler circuit or, or an Euler path. And we're going to use some theorems. This is why they're called Euler's circuits and Euler's paths, because they were developed by Euler. And there is an algorithm, like a procedure, that we're going to use to find these things called Flurry's algorithm. But first, we're going to start with Euler's theorems. So what do Euler's theorems say? They tell us exactly when a graph has an Euler circuit and exactly when a graph has an Euler path. So first of all, Euler's circuit theorem.
it says that two things. If a graph is connected and every vertex is even, remember even meant that the degree was even and the degree was the number of edges coming out of it. Then it has an Euler circuit. And on the other hand, if a graph has any odd vertices, any vertices with odd degree, then it does not have an Euler circuit. Okay. And we'll discuss this a little bit more, but I wanted to say the basic idea behind this is that every time we go through a vertex, meaning we take an edge to that vertex and then away from that vertex. So every time we pass through a vertex, we go in and we go out, right? We go in and out. So we take one edge in, we take one edge out, that's a total of two edges. So thus, if we pass through, maybe we'll pass through it more than once. Maybe we'll pass through a vertex, given vertex, let's just say k times. k could be 1, k could be 2, k could be 10. But it doesn't really matter. If we pass through it k times in an Euler circuit, We use two k edges, two for each time we pass through it, that are connected to that vertex. OK, so what this basically says is in an Euler circuit, every vertex, the edges around that vertex, an even number of them must be used. And so if a vertex is odd, we're going to get stuck. OK. Like, for instance, say we have a very simple graph, A, B, C. And let's say there are two edges here, and there's one edge here. OK? You can sort of see what's going to happen. We start at A. Maybe we go to B this way. And well, we could go back, but let's go over to C. And then we're stuck at C, because there's an odd number of vertices coming into C. We're not going to be able to get out of C. We're stuck at C. So if you have a vertex of odd degree, you will eventually get stuck there. OK, so this is for an Euler's circuit. Euler's path is similar but slightly different. There are again two pieces. If a graph is connected and has exactly two odd vertices, then 
it for sure has an oiler path. And if it does have an oiler path, so always if I say something has an oiler path or has an oiler circuit, it could have multiple different possible oiler paths or oiler circuits. There, there are often lots of possibilities. So really our question is, when is there at least one? And I'm not really going to distinguish between when there's exactly one or more than one. So you don't need to worry about that distinction either. And so, but we can say more, any Euler path. So if, if there is more than one, or, or even if there's just one, it has to start at one of the two odd vertices. And it has to end at the other one. OK. And then the opposite of this, if a graph has more than two odd vertices, it doesn't have an Euler path. OK, so the Euler path is a little bit um, is a little bit different from the um, it is a little bit different from the Euler circuit because we don't have to start and end at the same place. So I kind of fudged it a little bit when I was talking about an Euler circuit because I said every time you pass through a vertex, you go in and out. Well, that's not true if you're at the start or if you're at the end. You go at the start, you go out once. And so that's one, not two. At the end, you go in once. That's one, not two. So if it's the same starting and ending vertex, then in fact, you go out at the beginning and in at the end, and then any other time is in the middle and you have an in and an out. So in that case, it's still maintained, it still is even. But for an Euler path, because it's different, the starting vertex and the ending vertex, you end up going in or out of an odd number of times. And so they actually have to have odd degrees. And so we can actually see this in this simple graph again, A, B, C, And so let's start now, let's actually start at, um, instead of starting at A like we did before, we want to start at one of the odd vertices. So let's start maybe at C. And we'll take C over to B, we'll take it over to A, and then back to B. And you can see we start at C, which has degree 1. We don't end at A, which has degree 2, and we do end at B, which has degree 3. So we start and end at the two odd vertices. B, A, B is an Euler path. OK. So our simple examples match with what the, these theorems say. But more importantly, these theorems will work um, whatever graph we're using. Um, so so do, these, do these theorems make sense. We're going to do an example of it in a, in a second, but but does what I've said in the last five minutes make sense to people? Are there questions about it? OK. OK, so now we're finally going to get our payoff that I've been promising for two classes. I mean, I don't know how into this tourist dream you were, but we're going to go back to Konigsberg. And we're going to actually solve it. We're going to solve it just by applying these theorems. These theorems. OK, so remember the graph that we just constructed. OK, there's R, A, L, and D. And there are seven edges. Remember, there were seven edges, seven bridges in the original problem. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. Can we take all seven of them? Well, what we have to do based on Euler, these theorems are we have to count how many odd vertices are there. 
how many vertices have odd degrees. If they're zero, we have a circuit. If they're two, we have a path. If there aren't either zero or two, we're going to get neither one. So let's count this. So degree of A, one, two, three, four, five edges coming out of it. Degree of R, you can see there are three edges coming out of it. Degree of L is also three. And degree of D is also three. So every single vertex is odd. It has odd degrees. And this is four of them, and so it's too many odd vertices. And so therefore, by the Euler's theorems, this graph can't have an Euler circuit or Euler path. Okay. But here's the thing I like in particular about this. Not only did it tell us the answer, but you could ask, why can we get six out of seven? Why can we get six out of seven edges? And I'm going to go one better. Why did we get six out of seven? I didn't give you guys much time, but I think multiple people came up with six out of seven. And maybe that's quite hard. How did we get there? Well, essentially, let me try removing any edge. I'm going to copy this again, remove any edge. And like any good magician, I'm going to use audience participation. So what I want someone to do is either out loud or in the chat, just tell me which edge to remove. I'm going to remove one edge here. Sorry, I didn't I didn't catch that, I think. Um, R to D. R to D. Okay, let's do R to D. Okay, so we're gonna remove R to D. We have six edges. And let me count the degrees now. So in fact, let me just copy over these degrees just to make it especially obvious what's happening here. Okay, these were the original degrees. So these are no longer right. What have I done now? Well, I didn't change anything between A and L. So those degrees are going to stay the same, right? A still has degree 5. L has degree 3. Now, R had degree 3, but I've removed one of the edges. And you can see R now has degree 2. And you can also see that D, I've removed an edge from there. And so that has degree 2. And so this now has two odd edges. And you can probably, you can tell if you, if you think for a bit that this is going to happen, whichever edge I removed, it was going to take one away from each of the, of, of two of the degrees. And so two are going to still be odd and two are going to be even. So any six, ver any six edges that I tried to use, I'd be able to find an Euler path on. It's a path because we have some odd edges. So let's try to do an Euler path, okay? So let's look at some of these vertices. L is an odd vertex. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to go um, let's see. So I'm going to go L to A, L to A, to D, back to L, back to A, to R, and then A. OK, and so that one worked. So we go L, A, D, L, A, R, L is an Euler path. OK, so I think this explains why we are able to get close, because this Konigsberg graph is just barely wrong. If we remove any of the edges from it, it becomes a graph that has an Euler path. If we'd have to remove more edges if we wanted to give it to make it an Euler 
circuit. We could remove one of these two edges between A and L, that would do it. Okay, any questions about this example? Okay, so I, I just wanna point out the last theorem and I'll summarize the Euler's theorems and then we'll do Flurry's algorithm, which tells us how do we actually compute these Euler paths or Euler circuits. You might notice that I just kind of, I chose the right vertex and I just moved through the graph. It's not quite that simple. You might, in a bigger graph, you might not know how to do it. Um, so the Flurry's algorithm is gonna tell us exactly how to do this, but first, We'll talk about the third Euler's theorem. Euler's sum of degrees theorem, which again has two parts. It says that the sum of the degrees of all the vertices equals twice the number of edges. Right? Because each edge has two ends to it. And so both ends go into some vertex. So if we add up all the vertices, we're going to count each edge twice, one for each end of it. And so we're going to get twice the number of edges. But this is important because that means that if we add up, like if we add up all these degrees, we get an even number. So if we have odd edges, they have to come in pairs, right? Because even plus even is even, odd plus odd is even. But if we only have one odd one, then the whole thing is going to be odd. So it's a, it's a confusing thing to say, but a graph always has an even number of odd edges. Because when we add them all up, we have to get an even number at the end. OK, so let me then summarize Euler's theorems. Euler's theorem summarized. Okay. Part one is if a graph G has zero odd vertices. It has an Euler circuit. We still don't know how to find that. We're going to talk about that with Flurry's algorithm. If a graph G has two odd vertices, it doesn't have an Euler circuit, but it does have an Euler path. And then otherwise, It has some other number of, of odd vertices. So four, six, eight, ten, et cetera, odd vertices. One of those, one of those numbers, a different even number. And it has neither an Euler circuit nor an Euler path. Okay, so it's a pretty easy thing. If I give you a graph and ask you, does this have an Euler circuit? Does this have an Euler path or neither? You just count up the degrees. You look at how many of those degrees are odd. And that's the number of odd vertices. And that is the number that tells you if there are no odd vertices, Euler circuit, two odd vertices, Euler path. Otherwise it's more than two and it's going to have neither. Are there any questions about this? Okay, so now we'll move on to the, well, the second half of this lecture, but there are only 10 minutes left. So it might be the first half of next lecture as well. So how can we actually 
find an Euler circular path. We've counted up all the degrees. We know it's got to have one, but we don't know how to draw it. The answer is we use flurry doctrine. But before we talk about Flurry's algorithm, I want to make one more definition. We're going to call this a bridge. Unfortunately, it's a bit of a bad word because the, con the bridges in Konigsberg aren't the same thing as the bridges here. Those were just all the edges of the graph. A bridge is a special type of edge in a graph. And a bridge is an edge in a graph that if we remove the edge, the graph is no longer connected. OK, so actually, the Konigsberg bridge, the graph we got from that, actually has no bridges. Because any edge we removed, it's still connected. So an example would be, say we have this, A, B, C, D, E. OK, and these are our edges. Remember that connected means that the, essentially the graph is just one piece. Or equivalently, you can say it's connected if you can get from every vertex to every other vertex. This graph is connected, so that's good. And the bridges are any edge that if we remove just that edge, it's going to be disconnected. It won't be connected anymore. So if I remove this one from A to B, it's not going to, it's still going to be connected because I can still get from A to B along this edge. And similarly, if I remove this edge from C to D, it's still going to be connected because if I really wanted to get from C to D or even from A to D, I could just go A to B to C and then around this way to E to D. But if I remove this edge in the middle from B to C, then it's disconnected. So you see the difference. Removing this edge, still connected. Removing this edge, still connected. This one, it's now not connected. So BC is a bridge. BC, remember, refers to the edge going from B to C. I guess I'm in an excited mood today. I think a lot of explanations. Any questions about the definition of a bridge? OK, so I'll tell you the basic idea. Then we'll talk about the algorithm. And then I'm guessing we'll do the examples of it next time. But the idea is that you, when you're trying to do an Euler circuit or an Euler path, you want to cross bridges last because you can't get back. OK. If we wanted to, oh, this, this should have an issue. If we want to try to find an Euler circuit or Euler path, once we've crossed from B to C, we can't get back to B. And so we better have used both of these edges by the time we cross over. And in fact, we could. We could start with B, go to A, go to B, to C, to D, to E, to C. But if we tried to just go from B and cross over, we're never going to get to use those two edges. So it's really important that we cross bridges last. And the other thing is, this isn't quite so simple because once you cross an edge, you can't use it anymore in your walk. And so after you cross an edge, you remove it from the graph. OK. So the definition of what's a bridge is constantly changing based on what edges you have remaining that you're allowed to use. And so Flurry's algorithm, I'll give it in full now. Mm 
there are several steps. So the preliminaries, So we, we have two cases here. We need, in either case, we need to make sure your graph is connected. And OK, either we're going for an Euler circuit or, or an Euler path. So we need either it has no odd edges. This is our circuit case, or it has two odd edges. And this is the path case. So we're doing both of these cases at once. So all of the other steps, I'm going to write one like this for the circuit case and two for the path case. So then we start by choosing a starting vertex. And in case one, the starting vertex can be any vertex. Any vertex at all can be the starting vertex. This algorithm is still going to work. Oh, I, I didn't say what algorithm. So an algorithm is just like a procedure. If you've taken a computer science class, you might know this. An algorithm is just how do we do this step by step? Exactly how do we do this thing? So you could program a computer to do this exact thing, and people have done this. If so, an algorithm is just a step by step exact explanation of exactly how to do this. So choose a starting vertex. In case one, where you're doing a circuit, you can it can be any vertex. In case two, we have two odd vertices, and it can be either of the two odd vertices. Okay, so that's how we start. And now we're just going to step through the graph. So we're just going to take an edge, take another edge, take another edge. How do we choose which edge we take? Well, it's got to be one of the edges that we haven't stepped on before and that comes out of the vertex that we're currently on. So for each step, you have some set of possible edges that you could choose that come out of the vertex that you're sitting on that you haven't used so far. And all I'm going to say is you can choose any one you want. It doesn't matter as long as it's not a bridge. OK. Well, what if we have to? What if every edge is a bridge? OK, then you can. Then you can take a bridge, whichever one you want. So if, there's no, if, if there are some edges that aren't bridges, you have to take an edge that's not a bridge. If every edge coming out of your vertex is a bridge, fine. Just take any one of those. It doesn't matter. So unless you have to. Choose a bridge. Then it's OK. But in either case, After we take the edge, we remove the used edge from the graph. So this is really going to change things because it might make the graph no longer connected, for instance. Or it might make something that wasn't a bridge become a bridge because we've removed an edge. And so then the next step is going to be qualitatively different from this step in how we choose. But every step or every step we choose in the same way. And then at the end, we're not going to, to prove this, but we're just going to do some examples next time. When you can't travel anymore, this algorithm guarantees that you will have used up all the edges. OK, if you do this algorithm, this is all you have to do. You'll At the end, you just use up all the edges. And not only that, but you will end at, in case one, where there are no odd edges, so you're going for a circuit, you'll end at the starting vertex. 
without even trying, you're not even trying. This is what I think is crazy about this algorithm. You're not even trying to get back to the starting vertex. All you're trying to do is avoid bridges wherever you can. And given that the degrees are all even, whatever you do, as long as you as long as you adhere to that rule, you're always going to end up back at the starting vertex. And the second option is that we started at one odd vertex, and so we're always again, as long as we follow this rule, we're always going to end at the other odd vertex. We're always going to cover every edge in the entire graph. Okay, we will do examples next time, and then we will look at different kinds of circuits um, as well. We're, we're going to move on to the next chapter next time. So um, I will see you guys back here on Wednesday. Of course, I have my office hours as always, but um, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.